Before we get into the nomenclature of alkynes, let's review a few of the things we learned in the video on SP hybridization. So we learned that when a triple bond is present in a molecule, right, these carbon atoms right here are sp hybridized. And we talked about how the geometry around our sp hybridized atoms must be linear, right? So this bond angle right here is 180 degrees, which makes this portion of the molecule with the triple bond in it linear like that. And in that triple bond, we know that one of those bonds is a sigma bond and two of those bonds are pi bonds, okay? So if you don't remember that stuff, you need to go back and watch the video on SP hybridization. So this particular alkyne right here has alkyl groups on either side of my triple bond. So it's a di-substituted alkyne and uh, the more common term you'll see for that would be an internal alkyne. So let's go ahead and write that. So it's an internal alkyne, which just means that the triple bond is found in the interior of the molecule, in the interior of the chain. The, the triple bond is not found on the end. So that's an internal alkyne, which is, which is different from a terminal alkyne. So let's go ahead and draw a terminal alkyne. And this is just where your triple bond is at the end of your carbon chain, right? So if I put a hydrogen on one side, now it's only monosubstituted, and the triple bond is on the end or the, or, the, or the terminal of my alkyne. So this is a terminal alkyne like this, okay? So it's important to distinguish between these uh, because in future videos, we'll see how things like terminal alkynes have special properties. All right, so let's, let's talk about the nomenclature of alkynes now. And let's start with the simplest alkyne, a two-carbon alkyne. So a triple bond between two carbons, like that. And uh, let's just clear up that triple bond there a little bit. So this is our triple bond between our two carbons like that. And I have hydrogens on either side. So when we talked about two carbons for nomenclature, our root was eth. And since we're dealing with alkynes, right, our ending is going to be Y-N-E here. So I stick the root together with the ending, right? So I take eth and I add the ion to it, so it's called ethine. So ethine would be the IUPAC name for this molecule. That's, that's probably not the name that's used most frequently. This is, this is the most famous alkyne, also called acetylene. Right, so you've heard of acetylene torches before, and you can do a very cool demonstration uh, called underwater fireworks where you use acetylene in there. So this is, uh, this is acetylene, which is the common name, or ethine, which is more the IUPAC name, and uh, this is the simplest alkyne. All right, so let's name another one here. Let's, uh, let's get an actual chain, a carbon chain in here, and let's see how to name this one like that. Well, the first thing you notice is uh, the straight line that, that, um, that surrounds our, our triple bond there. And remember, that's because it's a linear, it's a, that, part, that portion of the molecule is linear because those carbons are sp hybridized. So when you're drawing, when you're drawing uh, Lewis dot structures, you'll notice that almost everyone will draw that portion of the molecule straight to better reflect the actual geometry of the molecule. All right, so I, I need to figure out uh, how many carbons are in this alkyne, right? So I find my longest carbon chain, including my triple bond. So let's see here. There's one carbon, two carbons, three carbon, four, and five. So a five-carbon alkyne. So remember, your root for five carbons would be pent, right? So it would be pentane if it was an alkane, but it's alkyne would be pentine. So this is pentine. So I have that much so far. Next, I need to figure out how to number my chain. Right? So I could number it from the left, or I could number it from the right. My goal is to give my triple bond the lowest number possible. So it's a lot like, it's a lot like uh, double bonds here. So I want to give my triple bond the lowest number possible. And that means, of course, I need to start from the right here. So if I start from the right, and I say this is carbon 1, then my triple bond starts at carbon 2. And then this would be carbon 3, carbon 4, and carbon 5, like that. So the triple bond starts at carbon 2. So all I have to do is put a 2 in here and say 2 pentine. So it's in, in that respect, it's just like naming alkenes here. All right, so that's 2 pentine. Let's do another one. All right, so one that's a little bit more complicated than that. So let's, let's look at this molecule here. So there's my triple bond. And then I have, let's see, I'll put in a chain and some methyl groups there. And so this is my molecule. 
All right, so once again, find, find the longest carbon chain that includes your uh, triple bond. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So seven carbons would be hept, right? So it's heptine. All right, so let's go ahead and write heptine in here. So this molecule would be heptine like that. And let's go ahead and, and number it, right? I want a number to give my triple bond the highest priority here. So uh, in this case, in this case, if I start from the left or start from the right, there'd be a two for either that methyl group or for the start of my triple bond. The triple bond is going to win. You want to give the triple bond the highest priority. And that's the reason you're going to start numbering from the left. Okay, so you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, like that. And so now we can see that our triple bond starts at carbon two, right? So I'm gonna write two heptine here, like that. And what else do I have? Well, at carbon five and at carbon six, I have methyl groups, right? So it'd be five, six dimethyl. So I'll go ahead and put that in here, five, six dimethyl, two, Heptine, like that. And this is this is uh, kind of the old school way of naming it, right? So old IUPAC recommendations would say to name it this way. And uh, maybe most organic chemistry professors will, st will, will still name this molecule this way, but there's a, a, a newer way um, that, that IUPAC recommends that you name this molecule. So it would still be 5,6-dimethyl, except now you would go ahead and write hept, and then you would put the two in between the endings. So it'd be hept, two, ein, like that. So the first way is more old, old school. The second way is more the, the, the new way of doing it. Either way is perfectly acceptable. Just make sure to do the one that your professor prefers.